Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Jake, Cupflow Prints. This is day three of starting a 50 printer print farm uh, in my garage. So on the agenda today, I'm actually gonna get four of these P1Ps uh, unboxed and set up. Um, <clears throat> we did this yesterday, basically the three A1 combos did not plug them in or, or calibrate them or anything. So I'm gonna to try to get that done as well today uh, and see if we can get uh, these four calibrated as well. Uh, so let's get started. So same protocol as yesterday. Um, I'm basically just gonna start pulling these off of the shelves, getting them unbagged, getting them set up, uh, and then hopefully we can run power to everything and uh, get everything calibrated and ready for printing. These should go uh, considerably quicker. I know yesterday we were averaging about 17 to 20 minutes uh, per printer. Uh, so I am confident that we should be able to get that time down a bit. And again, this isn't, you know, necessarily a, uh, you know, how to step by step. Um, there's plenty of great videos online um, to do each printer. Um, this is more of just a, a day in the life of setting up a 3D print farm. So the A1 combos do not come with a full uh, kilogram uh, spool, as do the P1Ps, P1Ss, X1Cs. Uh, this is what comes with the uh, A1, just 20 grams, so at least you do get uh, some filament. And, you know, a lot of you may already know, it actually comes with uh, a spare hot end um, and some other few uh, spare parts. I know what I've heard is um, the P2S, which is essentially, you know, the replacement um, for the P1 line, uh, does not come uh, with a spare hot end. So keep that in mind if you're buying one and, you know, you want to make sure you have some extra parts. I purchased uh, some extra parts for the printers uh, that I bought for the P1 line um, and the A1 uh, line as well. So that way, you know, if something breaks, I'm not waiting to purchase um, and replace the part. You know, I can alleviate some potential downtime, um, but there's enough printers to where currently with the setup, uh, I don't anticipate that being a big deal if one or two goes down um, and I don't have a part. Um, but nonetheless, I, I like to be able to have a bit uh, of extra spare parts just in case um, for now. Now, I did not purchase uh, AMS uh, for these P1Ps, uh, so these will be utilizing the single spool holder that comes with uh, the unit. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I was looking on Bamboo's website and they had a, a pretty attractive deal um, for the AMS and AMS 2 Pro. Um, I should have pulled the trigger uh, sooner because when I went to go uh, back on to get a few for specifically for these uh, P1Ps, uh, they were already sold out. Uh, currently on the website, it says uh, available in February, but it won't let you 
uh, purchase any. Um, I know some of the printers on the website right now are back ordered, um, but you can still purchase that printer um, even though it says back ordered. But the AMSs um, can't essentially purchase any of them right now. And if you have any questions, um, if you have a uh, P1P and you know you have any questions on setting it up, uh, by all means you can you know leave a comment um, and I'll get to it and and answer it uh, if there's anything I can do to be helpful. Yeah, super simple. Uh, so basically, that was it. Um, I know some of that was time lapsed. Um, and it was my first time I was reading through the instructions to make sure I, I had everything correct. I watched the video prior um, and I just double checked the instructions. There's literally like four or five steps and you're all together. Um, you know, the A1 yesterday, you had, you had quite a bit more. Um, but overall for, for either, of the printers, um, not bad at all. Let's see if I can get you in there to show you. PTFE tubes, a little tight, nothing crazy. I've kind of seen the same setup. I mean, this um, support bar running from front to back, you know, might start rubbing a bit more um, over time or kinking it. So I may have to take that out completely. We shall see, um, you know. Just run it, see if there's issues. If there are, I will adjust accordingly. Once I get these printers up uh, and ready to uh, start producing, I'm going to um, break down basically how I started accumulating um, the prints or the files uh, that I'm going to want to start printing and, and marketing and selling. Um, real straightforward, uh, and that will be uh, again in, in the next uh, few videos. Um, once I get these going, I'll bring it over to my computer and, and break it down. All right, two down, two to go. So, and I've had, honestly, all these printers since, uh, I 
think June or July of this year. I, I bought all of them during uh, Bamboo's uh, anniversary sale. And uh, I honestly didn't know how good of deals they run for Black Friday because I 100% would have waited. But uh, nonetheless, at least there was a, a slight discount. Um, you know, a lot of times they'll, at any company, they'll always have some some retail uh, projected price and then automatically or, or a discount showing you know hey there's some value here but i feel uh their anniversary sale did have some true uh, value in it but uh nothing like black friday black friday was really um or their black friday sale um from what i've seen was was great pricing So and I'll get into it too, um, you know, basically just my understanding uh, of the filament, where I sourced it, how much I paid, um, you know, again, when I bought it, what my, my thoughts are on it. Um, but I also uh, purchased um, from Alibaba uh, two filament extruder lines. And I have already purchased about 16 to 16 or 1800 kilograms of um, raw PLA, basically PLA pellets uh, for the extruders. Um, also, you know, all of the master batch is what they call it. It's basically the concentrated color um, that you add. Uh, it's a very small percentage uh, that you add to this uh, raw PLA to create, um, you know, any particular color. So I'm gonna document it, uh, break it down, you know, the cost exactly where I bought uh, the extruder lines, how much I paid for it, where I got the raw PLA, um, you know, just completely break down um, everything about that as well. Three down, one to go. All right, and that is all four. Uh, let's get it placed. Yeah, that worked out perfect. Um, you know, getting four of these into one row, I mean, it's, it's just, you're maximizing uh, the available space. You know, here's the thing. Um, I'm trying to keep my overhead as low as possible uh, in the beginning and, you know, for as long as I can. Um, and there's some guys paying, you know, commercial leasing um, and the amount per square footage is, it, it's a lot, you know, um, anywhere you go, really. I mean, I'm sure there, there are some rural parts where it's not as much, but as a general rule of thumb, it's pretty expensive. So even if you are not doing this from home, any chance of really maximizing your available space 
it, it's a win. So I, I really like that. You know, these are condensed enough. Um, so essentially, uh, what I bought to power these, it's not so much powering them, um, but it is basically a battery backup. Uh, this is the CyberPower uh, CP1350 AVRL CD3. So basically what that does is, you know, I can get six printers off of one of these that has six available ports in the back. Um, and then it takes uh, basically one 20 amp circuit. Um, I'm going to be using one 20 amp circuit uh, for 12 printers. Uh, that's my available consumption, um, you know, safely. Uh, I'm not going to uh, run all of these printers with the heat beds, um, you know, basically in the beginning, heating up all at once. That's your, your biggest power consumption, the startup, and the heat bed warming. Um, so as long as I stagger them, uh, I'm fine. I mean, again, you know, if the breaker trips, um, I can go and, and basically turn off a printer, uh, you know, because basically it, it's it's overloaded at that point. But I, I'm going to stagger them, and I, I won't have any issues. But basically the cyber power, uh, what this is for is, you know, I am in the south, and we get a lot of thunderstorms, especially in the summer. So, you know, if I have a bunch of printers going on, and uh, we get a lightning storm, and we lose power, uh, it's no good. You know, essentially all failed prints. So this will at least buy me some time. It's not going to buy me a ton, but a lot of the, the storms are just flickers. You know, the power just flicker off and on. Uh, but that's enough to basically stop all the prints uh, if I didn't have these. So what I actually think I'm going to do is I'm probably going to save uh, all of the calibrations uh, until tomorrow. I'm going to, you know, unbox one of the battery, actually two of the battery backups, uh, get those set up, um, run the extension cords uh, for the printers, and then take care of all the calibration tomorrow. I mean, because again... You know, I've got a lot more printers um, that I want to get set up. There's another, like I said, rack on the back um, behind uh, this one over here. And, you know, once I'm ready and, and cranking the prints out, um, I'm going to set up another rack uh, basically behind this one as well. So that's probably uh, what the agenda will be tomorrow. Uh, essentially, I will open two of these up. Uh, run the power to them, get the printers hooked up, get them all calibrated, um, and go from there. So if you've come this far, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, every day we're going to release content basically on the process of starting this print farm up. Uh, so don't miss it, uh, especially if this is something that uh, you're wanting to get into or you know if you find it fascinating. Uh, we'll be here. Until then, see you tomorrow.